Hey there, it's Ginger Bratzel from New Patient Attraction Automation and welcome. It's always my pleasure to be with you. This is our casual conversation about what's going on in practices, how to get big picture thinking and get and keep more patients for your practice. And um, if you've been around me for a while, if you've known about me, if this is our first meeting, hello. Uh, yeah, I usually wear a snarky t-shirt. I usually have a pop culture or some kind of reference on it. And I was like, no, I feel like my hat today. I got a new hat. So uh, I'm sharing it with you today. Um, and if you're in the dental world, you should know what this, this guy is and you should know what movie he's from. And if you don't know, you have to give up your dental license. You can't practice dentistry. You can't see patients anymore because um, he's important. In fact, you should put him down in the comments. We should have a little game out. It's like, who's, who's the dude on Ginger's hat? And, and um, what movie is he from? And uh, from that movie, who's your favorite character? I kind of have an idea who it might be. Let, let's see how you go. Um, but you know, it's all good and fun and, and making it happen. So, um, you know, big picture thinking. So, uh, we're talking about getting to the next level. That's a cliche sometimes, but honestly, that's what most practices want. You are X and you want to go to Y and you have big dreams. And, you know, as you're setting your goal for the quarter or for the next year or whatever it might be, wherever you are in your planning, you got to figure out what's going on. And here's the deal. There is no magic bullet. Um, in fact, I used to carry on to my um, seminars and I still do um, when someone's waiting for that one thing what's that one thing I need to do I, in fact I'll tell you right now there's not one thing and somebody when I do the q and say well what's the one thing and I was like well first of all you need to pay attention because there isn't a one thing um, it's it's not a gizmo or gadget it's gonna get you next level it's here it's in your head and, um, and, and a little bit here in your heart too um, what gets you to the next level um, it's what's stopping you. It's more not more of that instead of what's getting you to the next level. It is the, the F word and it's not a bad word. It's fear and uh, fear um, keeps us small, keeps us from trying things out. Um, I was talking with a group today and we're talking about uh, perfection and perfection is for scared people. Perfection is for people who will not go outside and try something new because they're afraid they're going to fail. And so fear and failure, those two four word letter words go um, interchangeably is what's really what's keeping you from getting to where you want to be in your practice. So it's, it's the, the fear of failure. And here's the deal, with any success you need to fail. Um, if you're going to get to the next level, you need to be really fully prepared to fail now. Um, uh, I read a quote too this week, it was a actress, she was in the 30s, and she said, I wouldn't change anything about my life except I, I would fail faster. Because that's the trick is, is when you have a down, you stick in the down too long. You need to get right up. It's not getting down, it's getting up is the most important thing. So not being afraid of failing. So if you see a patient come in and you say, I'm referring that out, that's not my department, that's fear, okay? That was money, that's um, a, a chance to expand your skills, that's where you get it. You say, well, I've been around long enough to know what I can't do. That is fear, you're too comfortable. And so, you know, if you're not comfortable, challenge yourself in the uh, area of your dentistry, you've got to push yourself and not be afraid to fail in other parts. And that's your business. And that's taking risk um, and making things happen with the understanding it could fail and probably is going to fail. Um, you know, Edison said, I didn't find a way to invent a thousand failures to get the light bulb. He found a thousand ways not to build the, the light bulb. So fear is to move you through. Um, you've got to pass through it. You've got to be willing to fail. And it's just part of the success process because you've got to give up that fear and be prepared to fail now with the understanding it is an exchange for potentially getting to a different level that you would never get through. It's the dip. It's what you got to jump through to make it happen. So how do you, you can manage your fear and you can um, and limit your fear uh, and your failure, I should say too. So let's, let's talk about it. Not in your dentistry. I'm going to pull that out for a side, but I've already challenged you on that thought. So you need to try marketing you've not tried before. You've got to try to go after patients you haven't gone after before. You need to hire people that are outside your normal typical. If the practice has been around for a long time, every employee, if I go through and do our assessment, we have a um, quality assessment uh, for good match um, for employees and what we're looking for to get to the next level. I can guarantee you, every one of your employees fits in this little tiny bubble. They're all the same because you're afraid to hire out here. This scares you. It challenges you. And um, we need to make sure you're in the right place. So um, fear of, of hiring, fear of doing marketing that you haven't done before, fear of offering services 
that you haven't done a lot of before and you won't go get the training or the practice you need to do so you don't talk about them. Um, fear from changing your hours and for, afraid of what people are going to say. Fear from um, being a little controversial, you, you know, something you really feel adamant about but you're afraid what everyone's going to say about it. All those things are fear and you think you're going to fail if you do it. You need to get out of it. So how, again, how do we um, manage fear and how do we manage failure? Well, like in marketing, we can test. So um, if I want to try something new, I can minimally test. I don't have to send it out to everyone in my community, 100,000 people, 10,000 people. So I can do through Facebook, I can change little things and, and test uh, different offers and see how people respond to them. And I can keep tweaking them and tweaking them. I had an office that had a great idea. Um, they wanted to go after boaters. And they knew that was the area they wanted to because it was discretionary income. They live by the water and they want to go after boaters. So they developed this huge campaign. It was a lot of steps and it, was, um, it had a keychain for boaters on it. And it had complex marketing pieces in it, multiple pieces. It was big envelope. It was expensive to mail. It was expensive to publish. And they sent out 10000 And I'm like, go big, go bold. I can understand that. But here's the deal. They were off in their messaging. Everything was off. That was a waste. They blew through the money. So when they tell me marketing failed, now that particular campaign failed and you failed to take the steps you need to market it. We could have sent that out in different capacities and see if people are going to resonate with that before. And once we get some successes on it then we uh, and tweaks, then we look, um, scale up and make that happen. So that's the leveraging part of it. So it's going forward, um, you know, trying out somebody, maybe it's a part time, um, it, like I need another hygienist, trying to find someone part time. Um, and see if that works on it um, to do it. Um, but you've got, when you go in, here's the deal too. If you are afraid to do it and you don't give it your all and your heart's not in it, it the world, the universe smells that just like a dog, it's going to fail too. So you got to be really committed to it. And when it fails, because it's going to at certain points, they all fail. It's not a hundred percent failure. There's parts of it that failed. So what are you going to focus on? What are you going to tweak? And you're going to do it again, you know, just like kids. When they take those first steps, they figure out the second time after they face plan or hit the coffee table um, what they're going to do differently and then and keep going and keep going. So don't live yourself, your life, like a toddler who would never get up and walk. That's, that's impossible. It's not in your nature. God didn't make you that way. He meant for you to go out and try things and new things. So don't get comfy. Don't get complacent. Don't be afraid to fail. If anything, fail faster and get up faster. Um, um, leverage the way you do it so you can do it in stages and test it and tweak it and go back before you go and uh, do these other things but be prepared to fail it's just part of it and let the fear to go for it it's part of the success process it's not who you are it's not anything indicative of you it's just part of the process and you know the best people in the world have failed miserably and they keep going they keep going so that's who I want for you this week so don't be afraid to fail Welcome it in your life and just move through it faster. Hey, this is Ginger Bratzel where we talk about big strategy thinking and it's always my pleasure to come with you. And again, don't forget to put in the comments, share what you thought of this, um, this week's uh, tips and strategy and also tell me who this guy is and what movie and I want to hear what your favorite character is from that movie. And we'll talk really soon. We'll give you more stuff, more goodies next week. Take care. This is Ginger. Bye-bye.